Welcome one. Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how fantastic uh, Toyotas fit their gates now better, more better, more better now-ish. <laughs> then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Tyler, and joining me for another episode here of the Snail Travel by Four Podcast is the one and only Mr. Snail Trail himself, Jimmy Jet. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Good. How Good. are you? I'm doing well. Thanks That's for good. asking. Mm-hmm. You have uh, some white stuff on your arm there. Yes. Still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you were you having some fun? Do we want to go there now? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we don't need to go there. I did some housework Yet. that involved oh, okay. white stuff. Oh, okay. Um, we'll we'll get back into that. Okay. I have Sounds lingering good. questions. Oh. <laughs> Bring it on. Uh, no, today's Thursday. It's a Thursday episode, so we do get to talk about what we've been up to. Uh, but we have a few updates for everybody. Let's see. We're in the uh, second to last week of October. Sounds about right. So, so uh, maybe, yeah, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is Patreon shut down? Uh, Patreon ha- is not officially closed, but I have now emailed everybody mm-hmm. that is a current patron, mm-hmm. an active patron. I messaged you guys all on Patreon and I messaged you guys. I sent emails to you with detailed instructions on how to sign up on irate four by four. Cool. So by maybe by the end of this week or by the time this recording comes out, I'm probably going to be shutting down Patreon. Sweet. Yep. Sounds good. You guys had your warnings. We gave them to you. It is now gone. Done. Done. So let's see. What else do we got? We got uh, the gift box tier over on irate four by four. Yes. That's open. So you guys still have a few more days here to get in for the gift box tier for Tyler's box. Um, Um, Try again. Yeah. Oh, to get in for Tyler's box. Yeah. Yes, you're correct. Sorry, my in, bad. Get into Tyler's box. You can get into Tyler's box. Thank this you. is your opportunity to get <laughs> into Tyler's box. And uh, unfortunately, you are not able to get Jim's box, which nope. we'll discuss in uh next episode, I think. Yeah. Next episode, we'll be talking about it. Um, people have already been getting them. Yes, I've been seeing them. And they've been getting into their Jim's box. They have. I hope they are all enjoying my box. I, I'm enjoying what was in your box. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> Took it back home with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've taken my box home too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so we got the gift boxes. You guys have a few more days to get in there. Uh, make sure you're signed up by the end of day, October 30th, because we're not sure when Austin is going to go trick or treating on the 31st. So just to play it safe, make sure you're signed up before the end of the day on the 30th. That way we don't have to bug Austin during his trick or treating. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. So there's that over on I rate four by four, a bunch of other stuff you can check out too. Uh, we've got discussions on every episode so you guys can get in and talk with other people about the episode and, uh, kind of what happened on that episode. There's uh, some fun discussions going on about the Moab, uh, episode. So you can guys can check that out. Uh, there's also, uh, your other ways to sign up for different things, including the giveaway tier that we do each month. And we'll get into what we're giving away here in a bit. Uh, but there's other stuff too. There's a, a little $5 tier that just kind of supports the channel here and you get access to the treasure hunt tokens, which we need to make more. And uh, Trevor's winning anyways. Yes. <laughs> so Mr. Clark's on a roll. <laughs> yes, he is. So there's the treasure hunt token. It gets you access to the uh, Facebook group page, the snail squad page. Uh, there's a snail squad private forum on irate four by four as well. You get access to, and we are going to be probably launching a, a donation tier as well. So you could, you'll be able to sign up as a subscription to, uh, as a monthly subscription to donate to whoever we're donating to that six months. Yeah. So the way I think we're going to be structuring it is, um, we're going to run it in a six month strings, I guess, increments groups. Um, and it's going to mimic the time periods of the gift boxes. So, uh, when gift box time comes around, we will be donating everything that comes in through those subscription, the donation subscriptions, uh, which will be a separate subscription from your snail trail subscription. Uh, we'll donate all of that to one organization. 
So we'll probably start off with Blue Ribbon Coalition, but we may end up changing it. Like we might do a United Four Wheel Drive Association or a Nevada Four Wheel Drive Association or a California Four Wheel Drive Association or whoever it ends up being during that six month period. But we will let everybody know when we're once the everything's open for gift box time as to which place we're going to be sending that money to. That way you can decide if, you know, hey, I really don't like the Blue Ribbon Coalition for some reason. <laughs> you can cancel your subscription for those six months and then start it for the next one. That'll be starting uh, probably November. We'll let you guys know and uh, more details about how that's going to work, but should be pretty streamlined. Uh, we just need to finish setting up the structure on the back end. Yep. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, I think we've discussed it off air. Well, mm-hmm. we did discuss it off air and I think we have a really good plan on how to, mm-hmm. how it's going to be set up. We just need to work with Austin and start the ball rolling. Yep. I am kind of curious if we um, can not set a price limit on the sign up page and people can donate as oh, much they want. monthly as they would like. Interesting. That'd be, yeah, that'd be a good way to do so it. We need to figure that out as well. Yep. So, but that is moving. And in regards to the gift boxes, we are giving those away this month uh, for our monthly giveaway. Mm -hmm. We are giving away two of those plus two other items, Mm -hmm. two bigger items Mm -hmm. of some of the smaller items in the box. Yeah. Uh, And we'll discuss that more on, uh, we'll discuss those items more on Monday's episode when we review the items in Jim's box. I like it. Um, yeah, the giveaway, these are, these are pretty cool. The, the extra items we're doing for the giveaway this month. So, uh, you guys will learn a little bit about that, uh, a lot about that on Monday. Yep. 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 With a fun little interview of, mm-hmm. from the company. Yeah. So let's see, what else do we got? We got, uh, reviews as always, uh, go check those out. We sh- were probably approaching the 700, not 700, the 600 mark. No, 650. 600. When we have 570 something last time. I think that's right. Yeah. So we're approaching the 725 mark. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, once we reach the 600, 650, 700, 750, or not 750, uh, there we're doing swag packs. Yes. So uh, we got some uh, stuff that we've gotten from companies and uh, along the journey here of the podcast that we have kind of huddled up in the corner over there. We'll give those away and ship them out to people um, as we get to those points. So how you get signed up for that is you go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts, as it's called now, and leave a review for the show. And you can leave as many reviews as you want. You just need access to multiple accounts. So just remember which accounts you do it on and be able to prove that you have access to that account when it comes time if you're chosen as a winner. Just like what um, happened for our 500 review. Yeah. Right? Because the first person that we that we chose, mm-hmm. prob- it was probably a fake account name. That'd be my guess. I don't remember. Was it, yeah. what, was it 469420? Username some, is username, taken. 469420, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then <laughs> the second one was a real person. Yeah. And so the second person got in contact with us. Mm-hmm. First person never heard from them. Mm-hmm. So by the time that um, their time allotment ran out, the our runner up actually won the prize. Yep. So do remember your usernames if you are making aliases. <laughs> yes. One hundred percent. So that person won a winch, and once we get to seven hundred and fifty reviews, we're giving away a set of tires from Yokohama Tires. Um, pretty much whatever you want, as long as it's DOT approved and smaller than a twenty inch rim. Yeah, that's exciting. And I think everybody in this warehouse right now could all use them. Yeah, uh, I know one person that could really use it. <laughs> you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jamie Poo. Oh, really? Have you seen his tires? No, I have not. I'm like concerned for winter of him driving to and from his house to work. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> so we'll, uh, We'll work on that. Yeah. We'll have to reach out and see if we can get him a deal on tires or something. So, okay. I was going to say, I've got a few spares at the uh, shop, more <laughs> uh, snail okay. trail shop. So we can <laughs> throw some of those on. Yeah. That's the reviews. That's how those work. Go check them out. Um, and then we'll read some more reviews on another episode here coming up. Uh, we can also call in, leave us a voicemail. We love hearing from you guys. I don't know if we have any voicemails, but we're going to skip them for today. Uh, we love hearing the voicemails, the feedback, the fun times from everybody. So that number is 916-345-4744. It's a good stuff right there. What else? Do we got any other housekeeping stuff? Episode 450 is coming up soon. Oh, 
Oh, that's right. Yes. Every 50s is a typically we get our significant others on. Mm-hmm. I, without kind of. <laughs> we can say, it. I don't care. Go ahead then. So I am expecting a kid. Yes, you I'm, are. Congratulations. I'm pregnant. I'm yep. prego. I noticed. You've been showing a little. I, I have been. We're uh, halfway through the pregnancy. So we're at week 20 now. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Uh, it's a boy. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's due. He's due on March 3rd. Oh, cool. Okay. So a big thing that I wanted to know is tips for taking a kid, either infant, toddler, a little kid, five-year-old, eight-year-old, 10-year-old, whatever it is. Tips for taking them off roading and camping. Yeah. Um, or, or, and, or maybe family camping. Yes. Family, family off roading. Yeah. As well. Because off roading and camping are two different things, Jimmy. Absolutely. <laughs> as we've learned in the past. Yes. <laughs> I'm arguing that I want to take this kid out on the trail, like as soon as he can hold his head up. Right. Which is like around six months, five to six months. So I'm going to be taking this kid. I'm not going to be like thrashing around stuff, but I want to get him out up in the mountains. Right. Sure. Uh Also because that's going to be prime summer wheeling season. right? (laughs) (laughs) Almost. Yeah. August, September. But the the secretary is very concerned about it. Yes. I can understand that. Yeah. And so I want, we want some tips and tricks. You know, how old were you guys when you took your kids out? Um, your newborns, uh, kids, when was the first trips they've been on any tips and tricks, advice for keeping them entertained for feeding along the trail stops for diaper checks, like anything we, we want to know what everybody's doing out there so that we can kind of not start with a blank slate, kind of learn from everybody else's mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, I think this yeah. will be fun. And then, so, uh, why don't you guys email us mm-hmm. or you can call in. Yeah, uh, but I think email would be best. Put in the um, title or the description something like Tyler's baby or Tyler's little boy or Tyler's whatever. Tyler's hellion. Tyler's hellion. <laughs> uh, put something up there so that Tyler's we know. Tyler's pet sperm. There you go. That one too. <laughs> okay. That'll work. Tyler's pet sperm. Throw that one up on the uh-huh. the title, and then write your question down below and send them in. And then we're gonna sit down with our significant others and mm-hmm. read and review these. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I have a child, so I have mm-hmm. a little bit of feedback in this though. Mm-hmm. The mini assistant hasn't really been off-roading very much, but I kind of have a little bit of insight on these things, but yep. there's you guys out there have way more insight, have much more knowledge. You know, I probably have taken your kids from infants to, you know, maybe young adults now throughout their life of in off-roading and probably have a much better things to say than what I can make up yeah. in the spot. So, uh, <laughs> nice. yeah. So write us Jimmy or Tyler at snail trail four by four.com put Tyler's pet perm, spet, spet, spet perm, perm. <laughs> <laughs> pet sperm up in the title. And, mm-hmm. uh, we'll review those on episode 450. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. should yeah. be a really fun episode. So I, I think it'll be a, a fun time. It's always a, a great time getting around the uh, bar or the table with uh, mm-hmm. the, our family. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, I think that about does it for uh, housekeeping intro stuff. We'll remind you guys a few more times about episode 450. Cause yeah, I think that could be a really cool episode and with some really great information for families out there, not just me and not just Jimmy, but for everybody out there. So, uh, we'll remind you guys a couple more times, I guess from there we can hop on over to what we've been up to. Yeah. Sounds great. Shall I go first? Yeah. You go first. All right. Well, I want to start with telling you about my story of yesterday. Yesterday Which Mon- was Monday. Okay. For everybody out there in podcast land. Uh-huh. I was going to say Monday or Wednesday tomorrow. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. what are we talking about? Monday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, yesterday for me, I got stung eight times. Holy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to hear about this. <laughs> All I saw was a picture in the of, group. Of a the, handful of bees. A handful of wasps. wasps so you look yes. like yellow jackets. They're, but yeah. They're ground wasps ground of wasps? some sort. Okay. And all it said was, well, that escalated quickly. And I was like, uh, did you not like fumigate properly in the house? What right. happened? Yeah. Is that at the house? Where is that shot? I don't know what's it going was, on. It was at the house, uh, but not in the house, but it w- became in the house. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So... It started before I got there. Okay. And the mini assistant, we bought her a trampoline for her birthday Mm -hmm. and she was jumping on the trampoline and grandma, we call her Nona, 
was over on, on my piece of property watching the mini assistant. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she doesn't really get, you know, too wild or crazy. So, Mm -hmm. uh, Nona was, which is my mom, Nona was like doing some yard work. Okay. And so the mini assistant, I guess said, Hey, Nona, can you get my shoes? I want to get off the trampoline. Mm -hmm. And so my mom walks around this oak tree to go get the shoes for the mini assistant Mm -hmm. and gets attacked. I know. And this is where, I don't know. I think she walked a different way than what she tell is telling us. Mm -hmm. I think she walked sort of through these bushes and stepped on the wasp nest Uh in the ground. She said she walked around the other side of the oak tree and they just attacked her. Either way, I don't know what happened, but she was getting attacked <laughs> and by <laughs> yellow jackets or wasps wow. or something. And I happened to be, well, I came walking up like probably like, I don't know, 30 seconds later mm-hmm. because I was working at the shop and I totally, at the time I totally forgot what I was getting, but I later I realized I needed to get my shop towels because I washed them. Okay. And so I was walking back to the house to grab shop towels And all I hear is my mom yelling at the mini assistant, go get help, go get help. Oh shit. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong? Because my nephew was also over at the house. Okay. And in my mind, I'm like, my nephew just got hurt Uh and my mom is running to help the nephew and and telling 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 my daughter to go get help. So at this point I was at the bridge more or less between Mm -hmm. the properties. I start like slowly jogging. I'm like, something's happening. And I go, what's the matter? I'm here. You Mm -hmm. know? And then my, my mom goes, there's bees. Uh, <laughs> and right at that instant, wham, I got stung. No, she, <laughs> I'm she, like, yes, there are. Uh, okay. <laughs> so then I start, and like one of the worst things to do, I don't know about wasps as much, but bees, the faster you move, the more attracted they are to mm-hmm. you. So the best thing for you to do is literally stop mm-hmm. and just stand there. Yeah. It sounds so backwards. And it's something that you and your adrenaline are like, Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom is running around with our arms flailing like all over the place, like swatting uh, all these bees. Anyway, so I keep jogging and I go to help her and she like runs onto the side of the house and I look at her and she is like, there were probably 75 to hundred bees on her. Oh my God. You have yellow jackets, right? Oh my God. A lot of them were on her. She was wearing black shorts. Okay. Right. And they're all, a lot of them were there. And I think they were attracted to the dark color. I'm okay. not, I don't know. I don't know enough ab- about it. I, I don't know if they're like ants when, when you smash one, there's like a pheromone that's released mm-hmm. from an ant. And then all the ants are attracted to that pheromone. Mm-hmm. And that's when the warrior ants come out. I don't know if bees work that way or if they were actually had my mom's scent there's, and went after them. So, so I do know that there's a, a type of bee, but it's specifically a bee, not a wasp okay. or a yellow jacket or anything like that, that, when the the soldier bees uh, sting somebody, yeah, their stinger that they deposit in whatever they sting, right, lets out a pheromone that says "red alert, red alert, everybody come and sting this thing." Yes, and then the whole hive empties. Well, it <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was kind of interesting because they were definitely wasps, but I did have stingers in me. Interesting. Okay. So th- I don't usually. Yeah, usually wasps, wasps are, do are they're a sting, but they, they retain their stingers Correct. typically. Yeah. And yellow jackets just bite the fuck out of you. <laughs> yeah. So they were a wasp. At that point, she was sort of at the side of the house. There was a bunch of wasps on her, but there was tons of wasps flying around right in that mm-hmm. same area. And I said, go, let's go into the garage because mm-hmm. I could, we could get into the garage. She'll still have wasps on her, but we can stop all the wasps. We could shut the door and then sort of isolate her. Right. Yeah. And so we run into the garage and that's when I really noticed them because she, when she turned and started running into the garage, I was like, I like just saw the amount of bees that were all over oh her back because she couldn't reach her back to fan yeah. it all off. We got into the garage and I was like, you got to take your pants off. Yeah. <laughs> and she like took her pants off. She like stomped on them a bunch of times. And then I was like into the house run because there's just so many more wasps. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you know, she was just in her skivvies and she had a t-shirt on and there was probably... 15 to 20 wasps on her still. And we like, I ran and got a fly swatter and literally hit my mom with a fly swatter like five times. And uh, yeah. And so eventually we killed them all in the house, uh, got them all off of her and then either stunned them or killed them so that they weren't really uh, a threat in the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell happened? (laughs) She's like, I don't know. They just attacked me out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And that's not normal. 
So something mm-hmm. something happened that yeah. we don't to know. To aggravate or something. Yeah, to yeah. aggravate the wasp nest. But she got stung 30 to 50 times. Holy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nuts. And so I would I, have gone into anaphylactic shock and died. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and that was my concern because uh-huh. I, I do know that. Uh, and so I gave her a blanket to wrap around herself. And then I said, go out the front door. Mm-hmm. There's bees in the garage. Go out the front door and walk out to the road mm-hmm. and walk with a, bl- a neon pink blanket from the mini <laughs> assistant down the road. Uh-huh. And she had bare feet on at that time because there was bees everywhere in her shoes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Walk down and go go home. Like wow. get get you Just, know get yeah. out get out you you know she and she was like I want to go home I want to go home I want to go home yeah. and I was like yeah yeah you can't walk through yeah, the yard go, don't go that way and and I'm gonna go check on the mini assistant who's still out on the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her outside, lock her out of the house. Yeah. Sorry. Slowest person to get sacrificed. And the, the first time I walked out there, I was like, are there any bees around you? Not knowing mm-hmm. there were wasps at the time. And she said, no. And I said, okay, stay where you're at and just mm-hmm. sit down and don't move. Yeah. And then, and then I went out and went towards the wasp nest where I got first attacked and there was still a whole bunch out. Uh, yeah. I can imagine. And my mom was walking home at this time. I think she told, and then my nephew started running out. I was like, stop. <laughs> and he was at the bridge. I'm like, you know, Hey, stop. Yeah. Go back to Nona's house. Mm-hmm. And he's like, why? I'm like, there's hundreds of bees flying around right now. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay. <laughs> Turns around and ran back. <laughs> and then when I brought the mini assistant in the house and then there was wasps flying around in the house still. So I had had to kill a bunch of them. Luckily they're, you know, they're not the smartest creatures. They wanted to get out. <laughs> right. So they went to the windows Okay. And I was like, okay, well, well they're that's all easy. like ting, 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 yeah. ting, ting at the window. So I'm listening for buzzing and tinging and then I'm just smacking them down. Yeah. And then I reached my hand in slowly and opened the garage doors so that it made a light. Mm-hmm. So that all the wasps left the garage that way. And then later uh, I went back out to look at the, near the, on the nest and my dad was like standing right there. <laughs> he's like, I don't see anything. Where is everything? And I was like, there were thousands of like wasps flying around. Yeah. And so I went back, I walked up to him and we're like looking for it. And then eventually we found this hole in the ground and we're like, there's the hive. It's right gotcha. there. And so that evening, my dad blasted wasp killer in it. Mm-hmm. We waited till the afternoon. Cause when the, later in the evening, they, they like go to sleep. Yeah. So we put a bunch of wasp killer in there and then a bunch of bees flew out uh-huh. once that all started or fl- wasps mm-hmm. flew out. So then he, another hour later, he blasted another can. Jeez. <laughs> and this morning there was still like five or six bees or wasps flying around it, uh-huh. but nothing like, like a hive like kind a hive of things. Wow. Yeah. So holy crap. I uh, took my shirt off and once everything settled down and I had the mint, like I spun around and had the mini assistant count and I had, I have seven stings on my upper body and I have one sting on my ankle. Jeez. Yeah. And look here, look at, see the, see my fit, my knuckles between my knuckles. Yeah. Oh yeah. My hand is still yeah, super swollen sure. and I got stung on my thumb on the main knuckle and it hurts oh, so bad. Oh, <laughs> Just right. It got, it's like the stinger was in the bone or something. I don't wow. know. It was, I mean, it's literally not in the bone, yeah. but that, that one, that one hurt the worst <laughs> out of all of them. <laughs> but my wow. hand is still swollen Dude, from it. So I was, I don't know how old I was. I was young, but I remember walking by a fence and not realizing there was a wasp nest on the fence. Mm-hmm. And, um, I got stung five times, like okay. on my right arm and hand. Yeah. And my whole arm blew up like a balloon okay. just from five stingers. Like my sure. hand it was like, I couldn't make a fist. I couldn't close my fingers. Oh, like wow. it was bad. And so ever since then, I'm like, I stay away from wasps. Like I can sure. handle bees. For some reason bees don't affect me. Yeah. Um, yellow jackets biting don't affect me, but wasp stings. I will, I'll blow up like a balloon. Interesting. Yeah. I've never, I haven't been this swollen from a sting that I can recall. Hmm. Um, before. So I think so you're not Superman, I, not to wasps not. apparently. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I ran over later. Um, I took the mini assistant over to Nona's house just because we wanted to see how everything was. 
and she was not in very good shape. She was, just had, was breaking out in high. 50 to 70? Dude, that's... No, it was probably 30 to 50. 30? But, still. Yeah, still. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, it's not, I don't want to go as high as 70. 30 to 50 stings, though, from a wasp. That's a lot of venom in you still. Yeah, she was, she was breaking out in hives. She, like, lifted her shirt up and showed me her belly and her back and oh, just my covered... God. And you couldn't, like, at that point, you couldn't count the bites because the hives were yeah. all over the place. And um, we called Kaiser, and Kaiser mm-hmm. pretty much said, take a, to Benadryl, and if she starts going into anaphylactic shock, then call 911. Yeah. Um, but she was doing good, yep. and she took a shower, calmed herself down, mm-hmm. and then was joking about it, like, <laughs> that afternoon, because I had to go back. So we, anyway, so we, w- I brought the mini assistant over there, and at that point, she wasn't doing very she good. She was just out. So I took the kids back to our house mm-hmm. and I'm like, don't like dad, you pay attention to mom. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got the I'll kids, get the kids yeah. you know, <laughs> and then later that evening, uh, we didn't realize, but we left the mini assistant's backpack at, um, Nona's house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I had to go back and I went and saw her and she's like, I'm sorry to hear you got stung too. You know, that sucks. I'm sorry I had to put you into that. Thanks for helping me. Uh You know, and she's like, this is crazy. You know, and she was just, she was back to being more normal. Wasn't so adrenaline high and, or in shock or whatever it was. Yeah, that's what she was. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was my yesterday. Holy crap. Afternoon. And I didn't get my panels done because I was like, (laughs) wait, (laughs) like, because I went to go get towels so I could start cleaning panels. Yeah. Yeah. So that all, that messed up my day a little bit. That's crazy. There's a, um, I've talked a little bit about it on the podcast before tooth and claw. Yes. That podcast about animal attacks. Yeah. Yeah. They have a podcast about a couple of rock climbers running into a hive of African killer bees. That's what it was. Oh my gosh. Um, on a rock face while climbing. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. There's nothing to do. You can't go anywhere. Yeah. And Drop. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, that's a, that's a crazy episode podcast too. If you guys, or if anybody's bored, go check that one out too. But I mean, it's 30 to 50 stings is not, that's, that's life threatening. Uh, that's absolutely. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely is. Jeez. Yeah. So, and then w- this morning I saw them and I was like, I don't like, I somewhat regret bringing you into the house just because I brought bees into the house, but I don't regret, like, I still think it's the, like, I regret just bringing the damn bees into the house, <laughs> but I don't, I still think it was the best move what in my mind. Would you have had? I don't know. Like, what do you do? Stop, drop and roll. And maybe you kill the bees that are on you, but you still got hundreds of bees in the air. Yeah. The only you thing know, like, I can think of is to go to a hose and that's, just spray a garden hose all around the person. But like, that's you're still, I, I you're said still that not, to this morning too. Yeah. You're still not, you're not removing yourself from the hive the situation. Yeah. Yeah. No. So that's why, <laughs> yeah. By going in and I, and I even said, I said in my mind, if going into the house wasn't enough, I was going to move you to like the bathroom. Yeah. yeah move, just go into smaller just spaces, go into yeah. smaller spaces to keep removing you from these things. But yeah, I just, I'm not sure what else you're supposed to do. The only thing I could have someone in my mind is just, just run as far away from the hive as you can, because mm-hmm. maybe they'll be like, okay, the threat's gone and, mm-hmm. and the bee, the wasps will go back. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, it was, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I was supposed to go off roading with you this weekend. Yep. Uh, I canceled on you guys because we, we still were have, all very upset. We cried around the campfire just FYI. I, don't believe you, but, (laughs) (laughs) uh, we did get a lot of stuff done on the house. I think we worked Friday through Friday through Sunday. Uh, we, well, Friday afternoon, once the assistant got home, Mm -hmm. uh, we more or less put in like around 16 hours each Wow, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, but it was a lot of like really small things, you know, Mm -hmm. like pain, like when Reese came down to put the doors in, he had to trim almost all the sides of the doors where mm-hmm. I, we had freshly painted fronts and backs of doors, but all the sides were oh, yeah. raw wood. Yep. So I, we were painting out, like cleaning those off, sanding them down, painting them, you know, and we put the mini assistance bed together because it had the broken face that came. So I had to put that back. We put that together. Finally, the replacement showed up unbroken. The, re- the replacement showed up <laughs> unbroken. Yeah. I showed you those photos, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It, whatever company this was sent a a piece of like assembled piece of wood that's probably I don't six feet long maybe seven for the side of a bed mm-hmm. you know and sixteen or eighteen inches tall in a box in a cardboard box with no padding 
no nothing padding in whatsoever, it. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And it wasn't like a fitted box either. It was like no. a box you should be putting 10 of these into. Yes. Like- <laughs> yeah. I don't even think it would have fit flat. I think it was in diagonal. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was, I saw the box and I'm like, oh fuck. It's screwed up again. Like they sent it to us and it's fucked up again. Like yeah. we're going to have to go through this entire process again. Mm-hmm. And so I took photos of the box and then I opened it up and I looked in the box and there's no padding, no, nothing. There's not, not additional cardboard, <laughs> no, not paper, not styrofoam the things. So using it in their ground. Okay. Probably they the lost, stole it, <laughs> but I pulled the piece of wood out and it survived. It was fine. Wow. It was totally, totally cool. Like wow. it was all right. Uh, paint was a little different. So we actually mm. swapped parts from the old one to the new one. <laughs> To just make the paint look a little better. But Mm -hmm. yeah, so we put the mini assistance bed together. Um, I did some trim work. I installed uh, the remaining remainder of the blinds. Um, I had to trim down a bunch of blinds, like Mm. four or five of them. Uh, Just like take like half an inch to an inch off. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, yeah, that was about our major tasks and did a little bit of cleaning and uh, organizing in the garage. But yeah, it doesn't like on paper, it doesn't sound like a lot, Uh but yeah, all, the, all the stuff takes a little bit of little bit of time, you uh-huh. know, and nothing's like, oh, you know, wham, bam, done. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, no, you know, I've been installing these blinds and, oh, the pre- person that previously put these up, which wasn't me, we hired out, put this bracket in the wrong spot. And so now I've got to move that bracket back a half yeah. an inch, you know, and mm-hmm. so I was like cleaning up some mistakes and, but, hmm. but yeah, it was, it was good. The house is, you know, it's, I think it's just going to be one of those those never ending projects. So it's a house. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I do, we are gonna, we are going to ask permission and try to go on the Mad Hatter's run. Oh, cool. Um, and at the, near the end of the month. So, nice. uh, both the assistant and I have agreed that we do need a week away. So, yeah, but we thought that it was, it was really good that we didn't have the mini assistant this weekend and we could just like, I think we worked on, Friday night, we worked until like 11 o'clock at night. Okay. You know, it's like mm-hmm. we just put in a bunch of hours and it needed it. And mm-hmm. there's just a lot of stuff now that's all the blue tape is literally off all the walls. Nice. So it, yeah, it's just nice to have check some boxes off and mm-hmm. get done with some things. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm going to Lake Havasu instead of the Mad Hatter's Run. Are you? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> What's that Havasu? Uh, the Ultra Four Finals, the Nationals. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, national finals. So yeah. Oh, um, I was talking to Cody and Cody Addington about that. Yeah. So, uh, why were you talking to Cody Addington? He was at my house. He was looking at my master bathroom. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, I haven't told him yet, but I might ask if he wants to actually take on that project. I had cool. him over more or less to like talk me through it mm-hmm. and tell me like, talk about things that I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, like I didn't know there was a, there's a code that you can't have anything 15 inches off center of the toilet drain. Like nothing can oh, be okay. closer than like, you can't yeah. have a wall closer than that. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, that's good to know. And yeah. I was like, well, I'm planning on putting something here. And he's like, yeah, that's, you're like 20 inches away. We got to take nice. measure out, you know, and like, you're totally fine. Nice. I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, well, do you see anything else? He's like, no, I think your plan is sound. It's just going to be a tight bathroom. And I'm like, yeah. well, this is all the space we got. <laughs> so, yeah. We, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so then we started, I, at, when we were concluding, I asked him, I was like, how's the race series going? You know, it's like, it's mm-hmm. going good. I'm getting ready for Havasu and I've got mm-hmm. a house to finish and mm-hmm. I've got a race car and parts and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, isn't that the story of our lives? He's uh-huh. like, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So, but it was good to see him. It was nice. funny because I've been messaging with Cody for a few, like a month or so to try to get him to come over, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, when you're down there, like in this area, here's my address. Just let me know. Yeah. And we'll f- make it work, you know? Yeah. And, he, and I sent him a message just saying, Hey, just checking in. And he was like, dude, I'm literally around the corner from your house. I could be there in less than five minutes. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm like, that's it. See, this is, that's how it needs to happen. Uh-huh. So yeah. So then he came over. Nice. We chatted for a little while. Nice. That's cool. Um, yeah, I got invited, but I'm, I'm not going to go because I'm going to SEMA and that would be back to back. I'd be gone for like two weeks then. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I can't do it with a pregnant wife that's halfway down now. Um, I need to start, uh, watching what trips I'm going on and, uh, my time spent away from home. Cause she's starting to get to the point where the, just everything things, is tiring her out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, everything is tiring out and she needs some extra help now. So, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to Lake Havasu, but uh, we will be doing the, or I will be doing the Mad Hatter's Run. Okay. Up, uh, up at Spider Lake, our Rocktoberfest. Yep. Which will be fun because I want to take the Forerunner in the Granite Loop. Okay. With the new setup, the new suspension yeah. axles. So, um, uh, I'll be, that'll be a main goal of mine for Saturday, but this weekend I was out at Barrett Lake. Yes, you were. Yeah. So that was a really fun trip. Uh, we went out, it was me and Hussman in the forerunner. Okay. Because he's still working on his Jack stand award. Yeah. And, uh, then we also had Dave Pfeiffer. Yes. Who's one of the original Sierra rock crawlers. And, uh, we also had Ozzy and his wife. Yeah. Yeah, out with us. So, uh, Dave, Ozzy, would it would it be was Ozzy's wife be Ozzy? Ozzy, I don't know. We just call her the Boz. The Boz, because she, she's the boss of the Oz. Oh, so the Boz. Like, uh, that's better than mine. So there's Oz and Boz. Oz and Boz. Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah, that's way better than mine. <laughs> was Ozzy, and I was like, well, the opposite of Z would be A. So, Has, oh, I got you. I didn't put that together. I thought you were just trying to be a funky Australian. No. Okay. <laughs> but I like Boz better. <laughs> yeah. Boz. Boz is her nickname. So, uh, the Boz, so the, the Boz, Oz and Dave had never done Barrett before. Oz hasn't either. No. What? I was more surprised that Dave hasn't done I, it before. I'm shocked with that, but I knew yeah. that from the text thread. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oz hasn't done it either. So, uh, it wow. was, it was fun. We went in, I took the forerunner with Hussman. Has Hussman done it before? Yeah. <laughs> we were just in there two, three weeks ago with our husband. I've done it with Hussman like five years ago. <laughs> well, I did it with Hussman sooner than you did it with Hussman. More recently? Yeah, more recently. Yes, you have. Twice. Yes. I've done it now twice with Hussman. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's that's how we roll. I don't I haven't done it with Hussman in a while. That's too bad. I know. Well, you'll get to do it with him on Oktoberfest or Oktoberfest. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's he's gonna be coming. Is he gonna be on your wrong seat again? On Saturday, I get to go out and pick him up. Are you driving out to? I'm going to drive out to Luna in the morning. Yeah. And then in? And then oh. back in. Okay. So, yeah, he's bringing a friend. Oh. And so that's why he couldn't come in Friday. So Got it. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, you can you can do it with him then. I would yeah. love to. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, went out to Barrett Lake. I towed. Okay. Yes. Because I really wanted to try out the manual mode on the transmission of the F-350 while towing. Yes. So we talked uh, last episode or hour, whichever episode it was. When I was coming back from trail here, I went up and over Mount Rose. Yes. And I thought I was going to die. Okay. <laughs> um, a listener said that he had a very similar experience. And he said, if you put the transmission into manual mode, it works so much better. The engine brake works awesome when okay. it's in manual mode. Can you do manual mode with the um, exhaust brake. Yes. Ah, so you, you turn on the exhaust up. brake um, and then you get manual mode. So he said it worked a lot better. And I was like, well, I limited the transmission. Like I, I didn't let it go above a certain RPM gear. Okay. A certain gear. It's a 10 speed transmission. So I'd, I was like limiting it at like gear four and five. Okay, sure. So, but it would still like cycle down through one, two, three, four, five, etc. Apparently, the manual mode is kind of nice. It turns the transmission into a manual valve body. Oh, literally. Okay. So like the Broncos transmission, if I try and put it in manual mode, eventually it'll go kick itself back into drive. Right. The F three fifties transmission, you put it in manual mode and it stays there. Okay. And you shift through the gears yourself. Wow. And all shifters. Uh, no, there's a little up and down buttons on the the shifter off of the steering column. Oh, okay. Nice. So manual mode. It took me a while to figure out how to get into manual mode because like on the display, it goes, you know, park, reverse, neutral, drive, M for manual. So I'm trying to get the shifter to go down into M and it won't go down any further. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? How yeah. do I get this? I'm like looking around on the dashboard for other buttons or switches or something. It's on the end of the shifter is a button. Oh. And you push that to get it to go down into manual mode or toggle between drive and manual. Okay. So anyways hit that. And then you use the up and down arrows on the shifter in order to change your gears while Got on the it. fly while you're going. Okay. So anyways, did that going on the descent coming back home down Wrights Lake road. Yes. And it worked amazing. I barely touched the brakes at all. Cool. Coming down that. So I was like, 
Thank you, listener. That was an amazing, awesome tip. Um, and I'm really glad we took the F-350 to do that. Um, the other reason why we took the F-350 was because um, I was taking Hussman. And I was like, I'm going to let Hussman drive the F-350 while towing. Because oh. he's looking for a new tow rig right now. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> so yeah, sell him on a dually. Yeah. So uh, he got to drive up there with the the dually. And then I sat passenger princess and uh, worked the entire time <laughs> answering course. phone calls, text messages, emails, blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyways, drove up there. Uh, Hold on time out. I want to, yeah. we also got another, um, piece of listener feedback since oh. we were on listener feedback stuff Okay, about wilderness. Mm. Did you get any of this information too coming your way? I didn't get, uh, anybody reaching out to me about it, but somebody commented on one of the, uh, blue ribbon coalition posts that I made Yes, of all the sound bites. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So I, so I've had, I had two people reach out to me and state that they said that wilderness isn't just, uh, is that they said that wilderness is, does allow people to go into it. Mm -hmm. Right. And because we stated that wilderness is like no people, nothing, only trees and natural animals and vegetation and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So I reached back out to blue ribbon coalition and asked them, I said, Hey, well, how does, how does this work? Cause because we have desolation wilderness right mm -hmm. above us. Mm -hmm. And I've gone into that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how does this work? And so they pretty much said that the government states that the land is wilderness. And then whoever's monitoring that land can designate however they kind of want it to be. Okay. But wilderness defined is um, non-motorized, non-mechanical travel. Okay. So people can hike in there. People can go mm -hmm. camping in there. Horses are allowed to go in there, but you can't take a bicycle in there. Interesting. Or okay. an automobile or anything. Mm -hmm. And so because it's mechanical, you probably EVs aren't going to be allowed to mm -hmm. be in there either. Mm -hmm. So that's where they draw the line. So the, the government can say, nope, nobody's allowed in there. Mm -hmm. Or it can be in its most open state, which is uh, non-motorized, non-mechanical travel. Okay. So my question to people then I understand the legal terminology behind it, but if all of the access roads to wilderness areas are gone, then how are you going to get to that wilderness how, area? How are you going to get to those wilderness areas? Are you going to go hiking in 50 miles? Parachute. Parachute in? <laughs> I, like that, that's my concern. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I it, get you. Yeah. It's, and so like, I get it. I get it. We are allowed technically allowed as human beings to go into most wilderness areas, but how much of those wilderness areas are really, it's not feasible for people to really go to because there's no way to feasibly access them. Yeah. I mean, you There'll can go in and hike to them, but you're going to be hiking a week to get to some places. It's like, is that, that's, that's not feasible for everybody. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a road up to the boundary and then mm -hmm. you have to figure out your way from there. Yeah. Yep. I, I understand. Yeah. I get it. I'm, but I'm just, I'm clarifying okay. I, what I, the definition of wilderness really is. Cool. Cause we were stating that it that was, was no, nobody, nobody, no, nobody. Yeah. But no, nobody's. Yep. No, so. no, only somebody's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, moving on cool. Barrett Lake, you drove home. Hussman drove there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you trailered. We trailered. Where'd you park? I parked in, there's this new kind of clearing space that wasn't there before Caldor. <laughs> Oh, okay. And is yeah. there now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's right before, right after, right before, right after the access road that goes from Wright Lake Road over to Ice House Road. Oh, so right where that comes into I uh, into Wright Lake Road. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a kind of a big parking area. You can fit five or six tow rigs and trailers in this okay. area. So we parked there, unloaded, and then drove into Barrett from there. When we got there, there was. Four, five rigs going through Gatekeeper from, oh my God, I just had the name of it. It was a group? It was a group. One of the off-roading clubs that volunteers for Sierra Trek doing Winch Hill 1. Winch Hill 1 and 2, I believe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyways, I forget the name of the club now. Sorry. But it's J. Lowe Wyatt. Um, Wyatt, and I'm pretty sure you've seen his Jeep. It's a Army OD Green military Jeep with a Caterpillar engine in it. Yes. Okay. I know it. Yeah. So 
uh, why it was out there. And that dude, he has hydraulic and air suspension as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's got cool. rams on all four corners <laughs> that he can raise and lower the rig, tilt it all over, do whatever he wants. So it was fun. There's a lot of interesting things going on with that Jeep. It's very impressive. But anyways, they went in, they got through gatekeeper, no problem. As we're sitting there at gatekeeper waiting for them to go through so we can go through this old dude on a dirt bike shows up and he's like, like I'm a motorcycle, guessing, like a dirt bike. Yeah. Like, a, okay. it was an XR 450 sure. Honda. Um, and so he, he showed up at the gate and he's like, Hey, are you guys doing anything? You're just going to sit around and talk. Hmm. And we're like, no, we're just, I mean, we're, we're going, we're just waiting for traffic to go so we can go. And he goes, well, I kind of want to go. And we're like, okay, well, we'll stop back. We'll stay back here and you can go in between us. He goes, all right. So are you guys just talking? What are you doing? And we're like, well, yeah, we're, I'm, we, I know these people. So we're sitting around and talking while we're waiting for the trail to move <laughs> so yeah. we can go. And like the whole time he was just, he, the, the attitude he was giving us was such that we were in his way and nobody was trying to make an effort to get out of his way and move along. Okay. And while well, like, he's on a dirt bike. While he's on a dirt bike. And can weave in between you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, oh yeah, you can go ahead. Like <laughs> go for it. Go. Man. <laughs> and so finally we told him, Yeah, go for it. And so he goes, Okay. And so he like went in front of the Jeep like he was gonna go into uh the gate, went around the Jeep, around the turnaround area, came back like he was gonna go through the gate, and then went around the turnaround area again. <laughs> What? And we're all just sitting here like, what the hell is this guy doing? And then he like goes, then on his second time around, he comes and goes through the gate and just womps on the gas to get over that little rocky section before the turn into gatekeeper. Yeah. And we had a, a rig going through gatekeeper at that time. So the guy all of a sudden had to stop. And once he stopped, he killed the bike, fell over on it and was less like, and he was an older dude. So he was struggling now to get the bike back up. Yeah. And he was out like the whole thing. We were just sitting back like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. What the heck just what happened? Did, yeah. We're like, does he not know how to ride a bike? Like, does he, the, he shouldn't be on this trail then if he's, <laughs> if he, if fell he in has, gatekeeper. if he has to keep going and hold momentum in order to stay upright, you, you, you shouldn't be on this trail. Sorry, right. buddy. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we're all just kind of like, what the heck? And we're all kind of looking at each other. We're like, is, should we help him or just stand here? So we all just kind of stood there because of the attitude he was giving us. And after he got the bike up and restarted, um, he turned around, came back out the gate and left. And we were like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so anyways, random, super random, super, uh, just, I don't know if he's just an old crotchety dude that thought he would have the trail to himself and was disappointed when he didn't. Right. I don't know. Um, yeah. but anyways, we're all, we're all out there to share the trails guys. Like we're, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, if a motorcycle no comes up behind me uh -huh. on a trail, I try to pull off the trail a little bit and wave them by because 100%. they go faster than we do. 100%. So yeah. if I'm stopped on the road mm -hmm. before the, uh, before gate gate, before even going through the gate, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm just going to wave the guy through. Yeah. Like, go dude. Which is what we did. Yeah. And he just gave us a bunch of attitude. So we're like, oh, whatever, man. So <laughs> anyways, we got through their first obstacle. Ozzy got hung up and hit the Jeep on the tree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Rookie. <laughs> yep. He hit the mirror. Um, and then, uh, you know, the mirror folds in a little bit. So sure. he got past the tree and then uh -huh. realized that he was hitting the top on the tree and uh -huh. tried to go backwards. And he was so close to just pulling that mirror right off of the vehicle. I had to yell at him to stop and pulled him, pulled him forward a couple inches. Then I ran in, folded the mirror in and then said, okay, now you can go backwards. <laughs> but, uh, what is it? First time driving? He, yeah, I think it's a Jeep owner thing. It's a Jeep owner thing for sure. Yeah. So I've anyways, never hit that tree. I've hit it once. Okay. <laughs> But it was funny because I knew I was going to hit it, but I was just like in denial about it. <laughs> and I, was, I just kept going forward anyways. Yeah. So anyways, we got him back on the correct line and uh, got him through gatekeeper. And then we had no more issues after that going in. Uh, okay. From the time of going through the gate to the time of arriving in camp was two hours and 10 minutes. Wow. You guys are motoring. We were motoring. Um, what's even more impressive was that the time spent moving was one hour and 42 minutes. Okay. So, so really it was drive through, get people, then you stop and you get everybody else through gatekeeper. 
And then really we were on the trail. And then you guys were moving the, the whole time. time. We stopped a couple times for to go pee. Um, cause it was yeah. morning. We all were, no, it was afternoon. Sorry. We came through in the afternoon. So we stopped a couple times to have to take a pee. We stopped once for the group in front of us. They were hung up at a ledge. Got it. But other than that, we motored on through and I felt like at, at a, for a solid 45 minutes to an hour that I was going fairly slow Oh wow. too. And I was like, interesting. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> that four wheel underground suspension under you Dude. giving you either really huge cojones or a big rear end because you're getting lazy. Both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both. I hit, I hit my diffs and the coilover mounts on a lot of things. Well, yeah. Cause your diff is huge. <laughs> yes, it is. It's not an eight inch anymore. Young no, man. I know. It was funny. We we're going through, you know, that one section where there's three optional lines and the easiest line is to the right. And it's kind of a boulder field through the center line. Then the left one kind of goes and then curves around. No. Okay. Anyways. Where on the trail is that? It's before the bridge, I believe. Okay. Like just before the bridge mm, on those slabs, not on the slabs. No, oh. it's kind of down in some trees. You come out onto the slabs. Uh, it doesn't ring a bell. Okay. So anyways, we're going through there. I went, I went through the middle line, which I thought was kind of the second hardest line. The, usually that left line is the hardest because there's a big ass diff rock in the middle of it. And there's just no, it's so tight. You're up against a rock wall and a bunch of trees. So you can't maneuver around this diff rock. Okay. You kind of just have to drag yourself over it. If you go yeah. that way, I don't go that way anymore. <laughs> I went that way once <laughs> and found out I don't go that way. So I go down that center line, um, which is just a bunch of rocks and you just really technical and you just kind of pick your way through it. And I thought that I had everything lined up. I was drinking a water at the time and looking over at the left line while I told Ozzy, I was like, Hey, the pussy lines on the right. And so that's the line he ended up going because he saw me going up and over the rocks to the center. So he took the easy line yeah. to the right bypass line for the Jeeps. And so we're literally sitting there and I'm looking over at the left line, not paying any attention to where I'm driving. Of course. Yeah. And I'm like, son of a bitch, that diff rock is gone. That's actually a pretty easy line over there. And while I'm doing that and saying that Hussman is leaning out his window going buzzy, 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 buzzy at Ozzy is <laughs> on the right side of us. And I slam my diff into a rock <laughs> <laughs> and like water that I was drinking went everywhere. And like, it was one of those ones you hit so hard that your foot jams into the gas. Uh -huh. And yeah. so I hit it and then kind of bounced off and hit it hard again. Oh. And so everyone's just laughing at us. I'm laughing. A uh, husband's laughing because we're sitting there shit talking to them the whole time. And then just slam <laughs> and everything. And then you stopped. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, <clears throat> nice. that was fun. I had to back up and get way up and off camber in order to get out of that little predicament. Um, first time I've ever gotten hung up in there. I guess I should pay attention when I'm driving. That would um, help. It would usually help. So anyways, got through there, uh, got through the trail and at the S turn, mm -hmm. I decided, um, Hold on, I, back up. Did you do the buggy line this time or did husband talk you out of it again? Uh, no, we didn't do it this time. Okay. Uh, going in through the buggy rocks. Um, but I told him I wanted to do it on the way out. Okay. I was All like, right. I don't want to break anything on the way into the trip. Sure. I see a bunch of people. We've gone on trips before with people that go through the buggy line on the way in and then break stuff. And we're like, shit, right. <laughs> there goes the trip. Okay. Smart. <laughs> All right. So let's move on then. Uh, passed bypass that, uh, went on to the S turn and I was like, I want to see what this, the 45 degree steering does at the S turn. Yeah. Cause last time I was there, I took the, the line on the far right. Yeah. And so, um, the, I did the S turn and made it with uh two backups, which is about what I was in with my Toyota axle. So I okay. was like, not that big of a difference. Okay. Whatever. Um, let's see, we got through there. Uh, I made through the ledge just fine. And then, um, kept going. There's a couple of big mud holes in the trail right now Okay, that, uh, were not there last year. And all of a sudden, like the, especially this one, uh, it's, it's gotten bad very quickly this year. It's appeared out of nowhere and now it's just getting worse and worse. So, uh, I took some pictures of them. Um, and I sent those to the Highlanders and said, Hey, when you guys are looking at coming in and doing spring maintenance, this, bring, these bring might some be rock with some, you, <laughs> some rock filled projects going on. So, um, got her, got those pictures done, um, headed on into the lake. And so we got on the trail four fifteen and got to the lake at 
No, sorry. It was about 3.15 then. Got to the lake about 5.30. Nice. So, okay. I uh, got to the lake with some daylight still, got camp set up, and then um, hung around, and fire restrictions are lifted. Oh. So we got to make some fire. Okay. And nice. uh, hung out around the campfire all night and just kind of chit chatted and crying. had fun about the day. And that's when we were commiserating and crying that you weren't yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, what campground did you guys take? We ended up in the center, the big okay. group area in the center. Sure. Yeah. Were there a lot of other rigs there that night? No. Just the that group that you can't remember and uh, mm-hmm. you guys? Yep. It was just nice. us and the group we can't remember. I can't remember. They were over in the nice campsites um, on the right. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they yeah. left in the early in the morning. Oh, they left at like nine, eight thirty, eight, oh, eight, eight thirty, somewhere around there. They were actually coming in. They had parked their tow rigs up at um, Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe. Oh, and that's cool. So they drove down, did Barrett driving out to do Rubicon. They actually did the Rubicon before coming to Barrett. Oh, and then came into Barrett for one night, and then went back up to the Rubicon and went and camped in the Springs Saturday night. So they were out for like four days, five days. So they parked in Tahoe, drove down the Rubicon to Loon. I think so. And then went to Barrett Mm -hmm. and then went back in. So they maybe spent a night on the Rubicon, did Barrett, spent Mm -hmm. a night at Barrett, then went back and made it to the Springs and spent a night at the Springs and then out. Yeah. Except from Barrett, I think they went up around Tahoe and came down Cadillac. That's what they, at least that's what they said their plan was. But their trucks were at up in Tahoe. Mm-hmm. So they went down Cadillac and then back up Cadillac mm-hmm. to their trucks. Yep. Lame. You could have got more wheeling in <laughs> right? if you went back down to the Rubicon. <laughs> right. Went in the Loon and yeah. got to the Springs. Yeah. From the, from Tahoe to Loon, mm-hmm. up Barrett and back, back to Loon and up back to Tahoe. That would actually be a fun trip. That would be a fun trip. Hmm. We'll have to play around with that one. Yeah. Next, uh, next season, next maybe. Season. <laughs> So, this winter seems to be coming pretty quick. It is coming pretty quick. <laughs> ding, ding. Anyways, the, uh, <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> can't take you anywhere. No, you cannot. Uh, you said it before me. Okay. Um, let's see. So that was Friday night. Uh, Saturday was the eclipse. Yeah. It Saturday was a solar morning. eclipse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we were, it was very, very overcast Saturday morning. And it was like 37 degrees when we woke up. Yeah. (laughs) So it was cold up there, Uh, but I stayed warm. It was great. Uh, I brought the Gazelle T4 with the Annex. Oh my gosh. So I had a room and Hussman had a room. (laughs) Who had the Annex? Hussman did. He had the Annex and I had the the big room. Okay. Um, And then there's like a divider wall in in that tent with the zippers all the way around. We left the zipper undone at the bottom so we could hold hands all night. Oh, it was cute. cute. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we were a little concerned about it raining up there at one point. And, um, as we were kind of unpacking our stuff in the tent, we had the divider wall, you know, up. Yeah. And so we were like, we could literally just take everybody's camping chairs and put them in here and hang out all weekend. <laughs> if we need right. to, if yeah. it rains, <laughs> I mean, what, there was five of you. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah it would have fit great. So anyways, uh, we had that, uh, which was hilarious and fun. Um, and then, Watched the eclipse, and since it was super overcast, we weren't sure when the eclipse was really happening. Yeah, okay. But we were like, it's still, it's pretty dark outside. Yeah. Um, but we just figured it was just super overcast. And then, like, all of a sudden, within the matter of, like, five to ten minutes, it was like somebody turned on the light switch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we were yeah. like, okay, it's still overcast, but it's a lot brighter now. <laughs> I guess that was the eclipse, and we just mm-hmm. totally missed it because of the overcast clouds. Yeah, it was overcast down here, and I tried... Um, I was using my um, welding... Mm-hmm. Your welding hood? hood? Yeah. Yep. Never know whether to call it a hood or a helmet. And you get <laughs> I, you get yelled at by welders if you call it the wrong thing. It's it was same, a, welder, same a welding thing. top. Yeah, welding. The thing I put on my head <laughs> when welding. Um but my lens is an auto darkening lens and it was overcast also for us. But every once in a while the sun would come out like sort of between the clouds, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't bright enough to set off the auto darkening (laughs) lens. (laughs) Okay. But when the, uh, there was a point at which when the sun came out and it was like just the sun and it worked and we, so we got to see the, that nice. And for us in our area, it was only a partial lunar eclipse. It wasn't a full lunar eclipse. Uh, but yeah, and then whenever it went behind a cloud, the it just was not, not darkening. Darkening. Yeah. So, yeah, it it was kind of funny because I was like, I'm going to use the welding hood, and mm-hmm. then I was like, this thing doesn't work. Not I working. just need one of those always dark ones. Yeah. 
And if I had like an oxyacetylene setup, then maybe I would have that. But yeah, yeah it, it was kind of funny because it was on, like it was points when it was working and then all of a sudden it stopped working and you just were staring at the stun for a second <laughs> and you're like, oh gosh, my eyes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we, we got to see it a little bit, but I do remember, I remember waking up on Saturday, well, Saturday morning, right? And there was the eclipse. And I'm like, man, it's, it's still kind of dark outside. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday morning, we woke up about the same time and I was like, it is so much brighter today <laughs> yep, than it yep. was the other day. Yep. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. We had the same thing Saturday and Sunday morning. So, um, Saturday was kind of fun because those three had never been to Barrett Lake before. Yeah. We kind of hung around in the morning. We took a lazy morning. People made breakfast. We made a fire, just hung out, warmed up, enjoyed the eclipse, said bye to the other group as they were leaving. And then as, uh, we were deciding to get up and go to the plane crash, mm -hmm. um, another group started coming in. Oh, okay. So the other group came in and as they're coming in, it was a bunch of Toyotas and we're like, Oh, that's a kind of a cool Toyota. Hey, that's a Toyota. Hey, there's, there's another 22 RE coming here. There's another 22 RE coming. Yeah. Um, my friends. I know my people. <laughs> and so, uh, we noticed though, as they were coming in that nobody had a tent. And so we're like, Oh, they must be they coming must be in for day a day tripping. tripper. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, <clears throat> we went on our hike and we came back and they were all still there. And so I went over and talked to the one of them who had some interesting things going on with his first gen forerunner. And it was a driver drop first gen forerunner. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so what a, engine was he running? He was running a Chevy four three. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Chevy four three with a four L four L 60 and an Atlas four speed Atlas. Good setup. So really nice setup. Uh, he said that it was actually, um, some company's vehicle, advanced adapters vehicle, I believe when they were setting up the, um, the, uh, adapter plate from the Chevy four, three to the four L 60. Okay. Transmission. Nice. Okay. So that was their test vehicle of setting all that up on. And he now has it. I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. That's nice. Little that's history. Cool. Yeah. A little history behind the vehicle. So it was fun. Uh, talking with him. Uh, and then he was like, yeah, we're all just here on a day trip. We're going to be out of here in a couple hours. Cool. So, um, they took off and as they were kind of taking like 10 minutes after they took off, somebody comes running up the trail, somebody, no, well, oh. somebody came up the trail and it was beer Andy. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And first gen Mike Nice. <laughs> and Mike's dad. Oh yeah. And, um, not Sven. What's his name? Beer Andy's buddy. I don't know. <laughs> anyways. Uh, anyways, so they beer Andy starts driving into camp. I'm like, no shit. Is that beer Andy? No. So I ran over there. I'm like, it is beer Andy. And so talking with him and, uh, commiserating about stuff and turns out first gen Mike broke an axle shaft on his IFS. Oh no. So he was three wheeling in pretty much the whole trail. He broke well, it pretty early on. Now it's time to do that solid axle swap. Uh huh. Yep. That's what I told him. I said, there's a good way to fix this problem, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so solid Dana axle. sixties. Day in the sixties. <laughs> super duties. Uh, so anyways, uh, talked with them. They ended up taking this, the good spot in the camp area over cool. by the, the water there. All right. Yep. And then we stayed where we were and then two Jeeps came in and went to the other end of the campground, but back by the waterfall. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's all that was there. Wow. It was a pretty empty weekend. The cold weather scared a lot of people off, which is awesome, which is great. <laughs> I, love I, I love cold weather. Um, and during the day, it was actually pretty warm. It got up to like 70, 72 during the day. So like hiking weather, hanging out around camp, beautiful weather for that sun. Uh, Saturday was bright and sunny all day long after the sun burned off the overcast clouds. Um, but, uh, yeah, we had a good time Saturday, just hanging out. Nice. And then Sunday we packed up and went out. And, uh, before leaving on Sunday, I dumped five gallons of water into the bathroom. Good. <laughs> Cause that bathroom is way full. Yeah. It for service needs to do something about it. Like that's probably top priority for that trail maintenance right now is that bathroom. Uh, because if it doesn't get pumped or, or capped and moved or relocated something, whatever, um, people White are just going to start. Yeah. They're yep. going to start shitting all their places. So I reported that to the Highlanders as well. Um, and then on the way out, we, uh, had a couple of, there was a couple hazard trees that were leaning over the trail in an X. Oh. And so they were kind of leaning on each other as well as hung up in trees on the other sides. And both of them were split at the bottom and they were dead. Yeah. And so I was like, 
those need to come down. They're, they're, they're going to come down this winter anyways, <laughs> but at least if we take them down now controlled, there's no chance that there's going to, it could come down on somebody before the trail gets closed. Right. Okay. And so, um, I pulled out the chainsaw and I had to cut it in such a way that it rolled out of the hung trees. So that was fun trying to look at the whole situation and be like, okay, if I cut it here, how is that going to impact this? You know, when is it going to go, um, finding a safe spot to do it from, because as a tree rolls, it's also losing the, uh, the grab on the stump, but you're also trying to use the stump to roll it as well. And if yeah. it, if it rolls off the stump before it's ready to fall, it could kick backwards into you. And so I was like, just having to tease all that out and really figure it out before you start cutting, um, was a, a fun little puzzle. I bet. Um, but I did it and it did it perfectly. Good. It was pretty you awesome. Just watch out just go and then just falling perfectly right where I wanted it to rolled out of the hung tree. That's awesome. I was like that was pretty cool. So did it fall into the trail at that point? It did fall into the trail because both of them were suspended over the trail. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, we just bucked them up from there and, uh, threw them off of the trail. So, Two hazard trees are, are now no longer going to be hurting anybody for sure. And then uh, for the rest of the day, we just kind of moseyed our way out and I played on the way out. Okay. <laughs> and, so now let's get to some business. Yeah. So uh, I took the forerunner and I wanted to go down the green line. Mm, mm -hmm. And so the green line is there's the, at the S turn, there's yeah. the S turn. Then there's the far right line. If yes. you're looking up going up the S turn, right? Correct. The green line is between the tree and well, there's two big rocks there. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Jimmy just caught a fly midair. It was more like a little fruit fly. It was like a gnat. Yeah, gnat. But anyway. It's been bothering it's, us though during yes, this recording. We've been watching it. <laughs> um, so the green line is up and over that big rock that creates the S turn. And there's another rock next to it. And then the tree, right? Okay. So the green line is going up those two rocks. Right. And so I wanted to go down that. And in order to get to that, there's a third rock on the back side of those. That's yeah. just a big ass rock. And you kind of have to climb it, but stay perfectly on it online to get lined up on the next two rocks. Yes. But what I didn't notice was that between the that hole. back rock and the front rock is a massive, a hole. huge hole. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, I didn't write it. Notice it when I set up to do this. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, that hole causes, it causes problems. You can't, oh, yeah. you can't really get to it. And you end up in order for me to do that line, I would have to get further over. So I'm not going over that back rock, Correct. but you can't get further over. Cause there's a house sized rock right there's behind a huge you. Huge rock, And so, you can't put one tire up on that thing, but you can't be too far off of that big rock and put one tire on it. Cause then you're leaning into that house mm -hmm. size rock. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I was just like, I kind of got myself wedged in there a little bit where I was kind of in the hole. But I, but I couldn't really back up to get back in line with the trail to go out of there because I was turned so far around and I couldn't back up anymore because I was jammed up against the big house sized rock behind me. Okay. And so, so you I had was to like, go forward. I was like, I have to go forward. There's no other option here. Yeah. And so I was like, hmm. Winch. But oh, you don't have a I winch. I don't have a winch. Never mind. <laughs> so I was like, I need someone to get around me. But like. I'm blocking the trail now. My ass end is in the main trail. So they would have had to go down the far left line yeah. to go down to winch me forward. And so I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, Hmm. Well, it seems like I'm sitting kind of on my slider on that rock, the, the back rock. Right. Okay. And if I'm sitting on the slider and I get pushed forward far enough, my front driver can get down to the bottom of that hole, which a, I thought was impressive enough. <laughs> Yeah. Like I, I was kind of looking out my window going, damn, that tire's way down there. <laughs> Good job, Brian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so I'm like, I got just enough traction between that and the, the rock on the right front passenger to spin the truck. So now I'm pointed between the tree and the rock on the far right on that far right line. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm kind of set up decent to go. If I can get traction and get my ass end up and over this rear rock, I actually have a pretty good line to go down the that right line, which is okay. now the left line. But anyways, the right line. 
And so I'm like, oh, let's try this out and we'll see what happens. And so I did it, spun the truck like a top on that on rock, rock on yeah. the slider and then came over and uh, made it between on top of the diff rock in the right line and between the tree without touching the tree. And I was impressed with that too. But I got up on that rock and when I dropped the front driver off of that rock, whole rig came down hard on the slider. <laughs> hard. Did you bend it again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I came down that slider and then just kind of drove out of it from there. And, uh, um, driver's side, uh, driver's side slider. Yep. Same one as that happened on the Rubathon. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so, uh, came down off of that, uh, really hard, got down to the bottom of the rock garden field and then parked and tried to open up my door and my door doesn't open. <laughs> like it wouldn't even squeak open kind of thing. Wow. It just, it wouldn't open at all. It was jammed up that bad. So I'd take my steering wheel off and take the, uh, my armrest off of the door and climb out the window. Yeah. And I was like, I'm a buggy now. <laughs> <laughs> so and That's what classifies you <laughs> as a buggy. If you can't open your door, you're a buggy. Um, and then walked back to see how everybody else was doing. Everyone was else was, they went down the normal line. Right. Um, and was doing just fine. So, um, oh yeah, I borrowed Dave's high lift and I uh, straightened out my slider the same way that Steve and Dave, uh, straightened out my slider at Rubathon. There you go. And while I was jumping up and down on it, essentially humping it, the the high lift turned sideways. Oh no! <laughs> and fell out, and I fell on my ass. Oh no! <laughs> so, anyways, they got all that on camera. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see that one. Husband's got it, so I'm sure he's going <laughs> to keep it for blackmailing someday. Um. <laughs> anyways, I got the door back opening up again, just fine. Uh, gave the high lift, put it back to Dave and then put motored our way down the trail further to the buggy line. Yeah. The, with the buggy rocks. And I was like, I want to, but I want to get out of, I want to go through here to get out. And I was like, it doesn't look too bad. Let's do it. And so they're like, okay. Famous last words. <laughs> yep. <laughs> doesn't look too bad. Those are big rocks. Yes. Once you're in there, those are big rocks. So uh, I made it into the kind of center area. Okay. Just fine. So there's like an approach and a, a departure section of each one, a center area. Right. Yeah. And you kind of, if you're going through across it, you kind of the way that I've pretty much always done it. Yeah. Except and so, for once. Okay. When I stayed hard, when coming out of the trail, I just, I, my approach was on, I did everything on the left side. Okay. Yeah. Even the big rocks at the end, I came okay. down on the left side. So I came in the left side coming, going out of the yeah. trail, came in the left side and was trying to cut across and exit on the right. Yeah. That's the no, like an S through there. That's my normal way. Yep. Yeah. So I tried doing that and, uh, it didn't work. I too wide. I'm too, I was too wide. Yeah. I couldn't, I, I couldn't make it work perfectly between <laughs> those rocks. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so I figured out in order to get up and to do that route, I would have had to climb that rock on the right that creates the S the big boulder, which is a big ass boulder it's a Volkswagen bug right there. Yeah. I would say it's more like a van again. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, but the problem of doing that is I would have come down on my slider and I wouldn't have been able to go anywhere. So like I, you can't, I can't get over that far enough, but I didn't know that until I'm in the middle of this thing. I was like, okay, so I'm trying to like get uh, positioned and back in the way that I can climb hard on that passenger rock in the center instead. Okay. Which is yeah. taller than my hood. And so I'm trying to get up on there. It's just not climbing. It keeps instead of climbing, just pushing me along the edge of this rock. So I back up and try it again, back up, try it again. And I couldn't get over far enough to get clear of the point that was pushing me in because of the rock on my passenger side. Got it. And so I'm like, okay, let's try and go the far left line this time. So I get backed up and try and go the far left. And it's just, I got up onto it and I couldn't, I didn't have enough traction to get my rear driver to climb that undercut there. Oh, okay. I'm, I can't back out of here. I'm already kind of fucked off too much of an angle to get out of here backing up. So I have to go forwards again. Luckily <laughs> there's people on the other side now, so they can winch me if I need to. But I was like, there's a third line option here, which is just straight hu hug, huddle, huddle. Hug, not hug. Um, cuddle, cuddle. You, I'm gonna cuddle these rocks, and I need to get them just perfectly under my tires. And it's just four big ass rocks, or three, I guess. There's two on the driver's side, and one massive one on the passenger side. On the far left. On the, it's in the center. Oh, center line. Yeah. Okay. So that far left one is kind of slanted, and then there's two big rocks at the bottom of the slant, and then a massive rock, and then the right side of this area. Okay. And so I was like. 
I'm pretty much just the right track width to climb on top of these. The trick is going to be if I have the wheelbase to stay on top of these and get up on top rather than getting high centered. Right. I think if I had half an inch more wheelbase, I would not have made that. <laughs> oh, really? I am literally the perfect wheelbase to climb wow. up on those rocks and get up on top of them before or have my rear end start climbing before my front end starts dropping off. That's that was awesome. That's mm-hmm. pretty pretty perfect right there. So um, I was like a billy goat going up on these three rocks, um, got up on it and then came off on the other side. And I was like, well, that was the last line option I thought I would ever take because the last time I saw somebody take that line option was Jeff Bakken in yeah. his full size Dodge. And he broke his T case and he broke his T case because he got high centered on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to show you a video, but okay. Well, I'll just show you a picture more or less. Yeah. So that was my, my, uh, first or my second line option choice. I was going to take far left. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did was that rock that Dave is sitting up on, that's the one that was the Vanagon sized rock that he's up on. Um, and then the one in front of him and the one that your passenger tire is on those, that's what I went over. Got it. (laughs) Yeah. So that's a fun line. Mm -hmm. So that's the Bakken. You came out the Bakken line. I came out the Bakken line. Yeah. Yeah. So ha, Jeff, if you're listening, I conquered the Bakken line. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So anyways, this was a fun, Hussman took that video. Okay. I was just showing you. He's great to have along on trips. He takes a lot of videos. It's awesome. This was, uh, that was a fun, fun time on that, that little obstacle right there. That was the one and only time I've gone that far left coming out. Yeah. And every time I look at it and go, that was was crazy. Yeah. I don't think the truck could do that again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It did it once. I don't know if it needs to do it again. Yeah. It's like rock chucker. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. So that was the, that was the, the highlight of the trip getting to do two things that I didn't think the rig was going to do. That's awesome. Um, and the rig ended up doing it. So it was, it was pretty cool. Congratulations. Sounds fun. Yep. Uh, And then we drove back down. I talked about the manual mode on the transmission for the F350 worked amazing coming down that grade. Um, And then, yeah, that was it. Went home and, and uh, today I took delivery of a cab over camper. (laughs) Yay. Yeah. So uh, I guess we can review that after you go through it a little bit more. Yeah. After we go through it a little bit more, um, it's a, the 11 foot, Lance, a 2004, um, with a single slide out dinette setup, a dry bath. Um, and, uh, I just figured out that with a kid on the way, um, we're not going to be able to fit in that camping trailer anymore. No. And we're going to need something more. Yeah. Um, and so I actually got the Lance for a good scream. I think a pretty good deal. And, um, we're going to be selling the camping trailer now. Yep. So if anybody's interested in the camping trailer I built, um, that has all the solar, the batteries, um, the Ironman awning, the electric cooktop, exterior lighting, um, all that good stuff. Um, let me know. So I'll be looking, I'll give it a few weeks here before I post it on Facebook marketplace. Um, and then, uh, I'll be posting it if I don't hear from anybody. So nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see what this camper, uh, cab over camper turns out to be, I think it's a good little setup for you. I think it's going to be great, especially with a kid. Um, (laughs) you know, the wife doesn't like to necessarily go off roading, but she wants to go camping, but she doesn't, she wants, how do I put this? She doesn't listen to the show. She doesn't want to do anything right when she goes camping. Uh So she doesn't want to set up camp. She doesn't want to necessarily go through the hassle of doing camp cooking and clean up and everything. So I figured this is going to be a great happy medium where uh, we can go on wheeling trips and she can stay at the, at the trailhead with the Lance. And then me and the kid can go wheeling for a day and then come back and, and she can hang out and do nothing. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I think she would really actually like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, uh, her cup of tea. Yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. So we'll, that's uh that'll be fun. I can't, uh, can't wait to dive into that cab over camper and get, mm-hmm. um, to talk about it some more for sure. Yep. Also, I, w- I do want to throw a reminder out there for episode 450. We are going to be, uh, we need people to help write in. Yep. Please write, write in, in, call in. We need info. Yep. We need info about how you took your kids camping, what you did with an infant or a toddler or, um, you know, a 
a young adult uh, what, of all ages, we need some advice for kids, you know, because I have a 10 year old. Mm-hmm. Tyler's has a zero year old mm-hmm. and uh, T minus f- five month year old. <laughs> yeah. Soon year old. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're we're fairly young parents. I mean, mm-hmm. in, in an essence of things, you know, I, I had got a nine, eight year old with my marriage. You got a hand me down. I got a hand me down. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> The best hand me down of my life. True. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I've only been parenting in a, well, by marriage only for two years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm pretty young on that side of things. So we need advice. We need suggestions, advice, um, any comments really would mm-hmm. be awesome. So once again, yeah. you can write in Jimmy or Tyler at snail trail four by four.com, or you can phone us nine one six three four five four seven four four. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that about does it. Um, yeah, lots of fun things I think to talk about over the next few episodes. Uh, we got a good episode for you guys on Monday talking about the gift boxes and we have a fun interview for you as well. So, uh, tune in Monday morning and, uh, to learn about all about what we got in those gift boxes. And if you didn't get a gift box, we have a couple more that you get a chance to win. If you are signed up for the giveaway tier before the end of the month. Yeah. So go do we that. We also have a few more that we will probably be putting up online oh, here true. in the near future. Yep. If uh, you want another one or if you really <laughs> like what we're talking about, uh, they will be up there as well. Cool. All right, man. Sounds good. Jimmy, do you got any final words for everybody out there? I'm just getting, I'm jonesing for my my four wheel underground setup. I'm, yeah. I'm really, after hearing your stories, man. <laughs> it, wor- it works so well. I'm excited. I've been really impressed. So, and with that, my friends. Keep growling. I got one for you. Okay, I'm ready. I used to run a dating service for chickens, Mm -hmm. but I struggled to make hens meet. Um, That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say there weren't enough cocks in the field. That would have been (laughs) probably better. I like that one better. Okay. (laughs)